Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to evaluate this integral of a rational function using partial fraction decomposition. Let's get started. Because the degree of the numerator, which is equal to 2, is less than the degree of the denominator, which is equal to 3, we can already set up uh, the form of the partial fraction decomposition for this rational function. And what's the form of the partial fraction decomposition? Because we have distinct linear and quadratic factors in the denominator, then each of these factors will correspond to just one fraction in the partial fraction decomposition. So we're going to have here something over x plus 1 and then plus something over x squared plus 4. Now, if the denominator is just a linear expression, like in the form ax plus b, or it's a power of a linear expression, then we know that the numerator must be a constant. So let's say equal to a. And if the denominator is an irreducible quadratic expression, or a power of an irreducible quadratic expression, like this, so ax squared plus bx plus c here should be irreducible, then we know that the numerator of this uh, fraction will be a linear one, which is in the form bx uh, plus c. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the values of a, b, and c in two ways. Let's start with the first method, which is the one that is usually taught in the classroom. So the standard method that is taught in the classroom is to first multiply both sides by this LCD here, and we'll get 4x squared plus 2x plus 23 equal to a times the quantity x squared plus 4 and then plus the quantity bx plus c and then times the quantity x plus 1. Now you may find the linear equations that involve a, b, and c by expanding this right hand side here and then equating the coefficients of x squared on both sides, equations of x, and then the constant terms. But a better way to obtain linear equations that involve a, b, and c is to just plug in some values of x into this equation here. And it's better to choose an x value that will make either of these equal to 0. So since we cannot make this factor here equal to 0, we look at this product here. So this product is equal to 0 when x is equal to negative 1. So we may plug in x equals negative 1, and we'll obtain the equation positive 4 and then minus 2 and then plus 23, which is equal to a times negative 1 quantity squared, so that is 1, plus 4, so that is 5, so that is equal to 5a. And this product here is just equal to 0 when x is equal to negative 1. So we can now find the value of a from this equation, and we'll get here 25 equals 5a, we'll get a equal to 5. Now, another good choice for x here is x equals 0 because it will make this term here equal to 0. So if we choose that as our x, x equal to 0, we'll get here 23 equal to a, a is 5, we have computed that already, and then times 0 plus 4, so that is equal to 4, and then plus, so if we plug in 0 here, we'll get just c, and then times 1, which is equal to c, so that is just plus c. And we'll get the value of c here, which is equal to 3. And now to find the value of uh, b, we just plug in an x value other than negative 1 and 0. So let's uh, choose uh, positive 1. So when x is equal to 1, we'll get here 4 plus 2 plus 23 equal to a, a is 5, and then times 1 squared plus 4, so that is equal to 5. And then plus the quantity b times 1, so that is b, and then plus c, our c is a 3, and then times 1 plus 1, so that is equal to 2. And we'll get here 29 equal to 25, and then plus 2b, and then plus 6. And this will give us 2b equal to 29 minus 31, so that is negative 2, which gives b equal to negative 1. Therefore, we can already write our integral as integral of a, so that is 5 over x plus 1, and then plus bx plus c. So we have here negative 1 times x, so that is negative x plus c, that is a 3, all over x squared plus 4, and then dx. 
So we can now find an antiderivative of the first term here, 5 over x plus 1, and that is 5 ln absolute value of x plus 1. And to find an antiderivative of this, so the strategy is to split it into two fractions. So we can write that down as minus 1 half integral of 2x over x squared plus 4. And then dx, this is just the part that is negative x over x squared plus 4, this part here. And why did I write it that way? Because I want to use u substitution later. This is just in the form integral of du over u. So this becomes u. And we can easily integrate this one. And then we have here a plus 3 times the integral of 1 over x squared plus 4 and then dx. So uh, for this uh, third integral, we can actually use already a formula, integral of du over u squared plus a squared is just equal to 1 over a times the tangent inverse of uh, u over a and then plus c where a is greater than 0. Therefore, we can already write our final answer as 5 ln of absolute value of x plus 1 minus 1 half of ln of the quantity x squared plus 4. So we replaced here the absolute value by just grouping symbol because we know that this is always greater than 0. Plus 3 times 1 over a. What is our a here? So this 4 here is just equal to 2 squared. So a is equal to 2. So that is 3 times 1 half. So we can write that down as 3 halves times tangent inverse or arctangent of u over a. And what is our u? u is just equal to x. So that is x over 2 and then plus c. Now, when we use this technique in finding the values of a, b, and c, we sometimes make arithmetic errors, which will lead us to a wrong answer. So in this video, I'm going to share with you another way to find these values of A, B, and C that will let you avoid making arithmetic errors. So what is that other technique? So again, let's go back to our integral. Again, we can write the partial fraction decomposition in this form. So what's another way to find the values of A, B, and C? So to find the value of A, we can use the cover-up technique. So a here is just the value of 4x squared plus 2x and then plus 23 over, we cover the denominator of a, which is x plus 1. And what remains in the denominator is just x squared plus 4. And we evaluate this when x is equal to negative 1, which is the x value that makes the denominator of a equal to 0. And we'll get here positive 4 and then minus 2 plus 23 all over 1 plus 4, so that is 5, and this is equal to 25 over 5. This is just equal to 5. Now, how do we find the values of B and C? Since we know already that the sum of these two fractions is equal to this one, therefore, we can write the Bx plus C over x squared plus 4 as 4x squared, and then plus 2x plus 23 all over x plus 1 and then times x squared plus 4. And then minus a, a is equal to 5 over x plus 1. And what we can do here is actually to combine these two fractions into a single fraction. And you'll see that the numerator will have a factor of x plus 1. So that we can cancel the x plus 1 in the denominator and we'll be left with the factor x squared plus 4. So to combine this into a single fraction, we first make the denominator of the second fraction as x plus 1 times x squared plus 4. So we have to multiply the numerator as well by x squared plus 4. So here we'll get, uh, so our denominator is just equal to x plus 1 and then times x squared plus 4. And then we have here 4x squared plus 2x and then plus 23 and then minus 5x squared, and then minus 20. And we can write this down as negative x squared, and then plus 2x, and then plus 3, all over that denominator. Why did I say that you can avoid arithmetic errors when you're using this technique? Because if you cannot find a factor, x plus 1, in your numerator, then that means there is something wrong in your computation. But if you can produce a factor, x plus 1, in the numerator, then it seems that your computation is correct. 
So we can easily check here whether x plus 1 is a factor of the numerator or not by just a trial and error method. So we produce here x plus 1. Of course, the other factor, since the first term here is negative x squared, we need to have minus x there. And since the last term is a positive 3, we need to have here plus 3. And when we cancel this uh, x plus 1 here, we'll get negative x plus 3 over x squared plus 4. And from here, we can already find the values of b and c. So b is just the coefficient of x, which is equal to negative 1. And c is just the constant term, so that is equal to 3. So as you can see here, we got the same values of a, b, and c. I hope that you like the tips that you learned in this video. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.